It's still the breakfast and plus TV Africa. Another time to go through the pages of national dailies. We'll call it off the press. And Tunde Kolawale joins us this morning via phone. Tunde, it's good to have you join us. It's good to be with you. Thank you. Let's start with the uh, Punch newspaper this morning. Presidential fleet funding has increased to 81 billion under Buhari. Uh, that's the bold caption. And it's more like an irony, if you ask me, because I remember, uh, you know, in 2015, uh, the government, the current government had complained of uh, reduction, you know, reducing costs, and we're going to sell off, you know, some uh, aircrafts, you know, just to uh, help us cut costs of governance and maintenance. Now we're looking at $81 billion under this administration President fails to uphold pledge to reduce aircrafts and budget for Aso Villa refreshment jumps to 2 billion naira. Nigeria over borrowing to fund non essential items. Uh, that's it, underneath the bold caption. Asu awaiting Buhari on no work, no pay, holds neck meeting. Federal government eyes $100 billion for SDGs, pledges business reforms. Federal government approves Leki Ekpe Airport and projects 5 million passengers. So, uh, yeah. Obi unveils campaign team today, Ohaneze lots of Fanny Fair. And Aina deletes 2.7 million for double registration. So, uh, we're hoping to find out what will become of, you know, the register. I mean, will the figure actually change at the end of the day? Nation building requires sacrifice, Buhari tells 450 honorees, and a Lagos developer defrauds 200 house seekers. Victims blame police. <laughs> In this Lagos, they don't tell you to open your eye. Okay, that's how they say it. Osinachi's husband abused her, and singer's ex employee tells the court. Well, she's dead now, unfortunately. Flood killed 500. 1,000 uh, injured, 1,546. That's what uh, the federal government is quoted to say. That's the much we can take this morning on the Punch newspaper. All right. Let's um, <laughs> go over to the next one. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, the Nation newspaper with some interesting headlines this morning. I'll leave a secured country, Buhari assures Nigerians. I will leave uh, uh, a secured country. Buhari assures Nigerians, President confessed national honors on 443 Nigerians, seven foreigners. Uh, Lagos government gets approval for Leki Airport as punch captured there. Some old lords, federal government, or your um, assembly. I think that, that held at the Ihingbeti uh, conference um, with the Minister of um, Aviation, Hadi Sirka, in attendance. Or your assembly kicks over. Uh, EFCC's invitation to members or, or your assembly kicks over EFCC's invitation to members. All right. Um, <laughs> would like to see how that plays out at the end of the day. Why I am yet to release manifesto by Obi Dangote, Oba Jana Cement properly acquired. It's uh, a battle between Dangote and Kogi state government. IMF cuts Nigeria's economic growth to 3.2%. I think that should be is it a growth forecast. Uh, strike how House of Reps broke a truce uh, between the federal government and ASU. We need to look into that matter. <laughs> um, Lagos more likely owns wife over deputy governorship ticket. You know, like uh, President Wari said, maybe he feels like uh, her place should be in his other room. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Let's go over to some more papers. Mercy, over to you. We have the Nigerian Tribune, how Nigerian doctors or the foreigners are exploited in the United Kingdom. And... Uh, that's what the BBC has quoted to say. I remember my cousin who's in the UK, he decided, yesterday he was just talking and he said, you know what, let me give you some news. Apparently, I hadn't seen, you know, the report up until the time he had mentioned, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really very interesting and funny at the same time. We can appoint 14,000 advisors, 359 liaison officers. I saw your tweet on that issue. And at confirmment <laughs> of national honors on 440 Nigerians, I would hand over a Nigeria free of insecurity. That's what the president is quoted to say. Seven years plus, counting. So maybe in December. 
all of this will just go away. Uh, we're, we're, we're just, uh, you know, watching to see how all of this unfolds. And again, you have Song Wo Liu receives federal government approval letter for Lekki Airport. And uh, a state begins some kind of summit. Uh, okay, that's not very clear, so I'll move away from that. Expect high intensity rain, riverine flooding. That's what Naimat wants, north, central, southern states. And we hope that, you know, everyone would be, uh, all hands would be on deck. Crude oil theft. Edwin Clark calls for judicial inquiry and says military is complicit. Kidnapping, banditry, reasons uh, state security outfits must be armed. Now the conversation is tilting towards, you know, uh, decentralization and state policing, especially with what's happening right there, you know, in the River Rhine area. Reps begin concentration of 20.51 trillion Naira proposed expenditure for 2023. We're talking about our budget. That's it on the Nigerian Tribune. We'll quickly take the uh, headlines on the front page of uh, this day before we uh, go over to our guest who is uh, standing by. Uh, the big one there on the front page of this day on uh, Wednesday. Buhari, citizens who contribute to national development deserve to be appreciated. You know, national development. Um, quite, quite, quite a... Um, a scene when the, <laughs> the founder or the co-founder, a co-founder of um, uh, Paystack, you know, went to get his award. He used to look on the president's I face. Saw it. He, he really <laughs> he looked, looked shocked. shocked, shocked, shocked to say the least. Well, they have country. He has contributed to national involvement. Uh, that's what the president is saying. You can see the pictures there. Congratulations to all of them. Uh, floods: five hundred confirmed dead, uh, forty-five thousand houses destroyed, seventy thousand uh, hectares of farmland submerged nationwide. Uh, what's the president saying about that? What's the federal government saying? Uh, the writer to that headline: FG insists magnitude of current natural disaster not seen since 2012. Okay, and uh, no need for panic over food insecurity. Minister assures. Um, some headlines on the front page of. Uh, the nation that this day, we take the last one, why APC is shying away from president's records at Tiku campaign reveals. Um, I think we'll leave it at that. And at this point, introduce our guest, uh, Tunde Kolaole, who joins us uh, uh, on the program. Um, um, Barista Kolaole, yeah, what, what are your thoughts on, on this um, statement? Because I've been looking for something to come from the federal government as it concerns the flooding in Kogi State, in uh, other parts of the northern Nigeria, Kwara State. You have a number of state and other states. Um, right now, they are saying that the magnitude of the current natural disaster is, has not been seen since 2012, um, with the paper saying 500 confirmed dead, 45,000 houses destroyed, uh, 70,000 hectares of farmland submerged nationwide. That's one. The minister is also saying there's no need for panic over food insecurity. Over to you, sir. Well, uh, the flooding that we are seeing in most parts of Nigeria, is really unfortunate. But if you have been following what is happening in the other parts of the world, you will find out that the flooding is no longer peculiar to Nigeria. There was a massive flood in the United States of America, such that the president had to leave Washington to go and take charge and supervise um, the rescuing of people in the US. You also look at uh, what happened in um, uh, Pakistan. It was a massive, massive um, uh, flooding. So it would appear to me that uh, what the scientists have been telling us with regards to climate change is real, is a reality. It is something that we should prepare for. And again, at the beginning of this year and before the rain started, NIMET, which is the meteorological um, uh, agency that predicts uh, what the weather outlook will look like, had several warned that there's going to be flood in certain parts of the country, and that we should still be preparing for more rain. But the truth of the matter is that um, when these alarms are raised, uh, most times, and it's not in Nigeria alone, in most parts of the world, the ordinary citizens who is likely to be badly affected by it, 
doesn't really, don't really care much about what the scientists are saying. Our own problem is more peculiar and it's worse simply because the leadership uh, athlete uh, give flooding and some of these natural disasters the kind of attention that it deserves. And for those who even want to give it the attention it deserves, the equipment, the resources to really do the needful are no longer there. Because I take a cue from the US, immediately the flood in the US happened. The Army, the Navy, and some of the other security aspects were sent out. They had helicopters, they have uh, badges, they have boats, they have cranes, and they have all manners of equipment to rescue people. But here in Nigeria, we don't have that. I think we should learn from the experiences of the developed um, countries how these things are done. And then when it does happen, we should be able to do the needful to our people. My uh, sympathy with all those who are affected by this, I also will pray that the government in all the state that is affected, especially Kogi State, will come to the rescue of the ordinary man who is at the receiving end of this uh, uh, flooding. Well. Um, Tunde Kolawale, do you think that it would be fair for us to constantly, um, you know, compare the flooding that's happening in other parts of the country? And we always say, yes, we understand that Naimet has stated over time that, you know, there would be periodic rains and uh, the downpour would be unusual. Mm -hmm. But if you look at our habits and behavior, uh, you know, over time, do, do, do you think that this is entirely a natural disaster or it's not man-made, where you have houses and buildings on uh, water channels? That's it. And then you, at some point, so that's on the one hand, lack of drainages. And even when you have a drainage system, you have houses on it. So there are structures that are, you know, uh, obstructing the flow of water. And naturally, water would always find its way. On the other hand, you also find the fact that a lot of people, a lot of Nigerians are in the habit of tossing things in the gutters or the waterways, if you want to say. All of this constitute, you know, a major issue. So it, do you think it's really fair every other time? Because we always say, oh, it's, it's a global incident. It's, it's, it's a natural thing. It's what's happening across board. And so we're not an exception. Would you not well, agree that our attitude and behavior over time is contributing to the flooding that we're experiencing? Well, I Nigeria? agree uh, that we have very, very bad and very poor habit with regards to waste management, with regards to drainage uh, management, and also with regards to planning, especially urban and the housing planning in all the respective places. Even in an urban area like Lagos, Immediately it's raining, you will find out that different households will bring out their different refuse baskets out and start dumping it into the drainages, hoping and believing that the rains will wash away whatever they have dropped them in the drainages. Also in a place like Kogi State, for example, you will find so many houses are built very close to River Niger and been a massive place places you could easily predict that when the water level rises, it will affect those um, uh, houses or settlements. If the government is alive with responsibility, we would have been able to enforce the town planning or the city planning or our housing planning um, uh, structures in all the different places. But lo and behold, enforcement of laws in our country has been a very, very weak um, or a very challenging uh, uh, manner. All right. Even when government makes a fault, you will find out the ordinary man will still find a way to circumvent it, basically because of so many reasons. I do know that the cost of perfecting building plans and doing some other preliminary things before you build a house is very, very expensive in most parts of Nigeria. Right, and so today. people cut corners. Um, I mean, quickly, let's move away from that uh, you know, right. conversation because we have more yeah. 
issues yeah. this morning on the front uh, border or front pages, if you like to say. On the punch, it talks about the budget reallocation to the presidential air fleet that has increased to 121% in almost eight years. It's not eight years already, and that's what it is. Uh, how do you, um, you know, react to this? Well, it's, uh, it's uh, shocking to me. Uh, I remember when the APC and Mr. President were, were campaigning uh, to rule Nigeria, there were promises that they will reduce the presidential fleet. There was even the kind they flew that some of the aircraft in the presidential fleet will be used to reestablish the Nigerian airway. But sadly, since the APC government came into power, they have failed woefully to do anything in that respect. And the reason for this is not far-fetched. Our allies are a very interesting people. They like beautiful things. They like a cozy environment, such that you find out the Senate president, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, the service chiefs, and some of these other powerful people. When they travel, they would like to go in private um, or in some, in some of these uh, presidential uh, uh, fleets. And so even if the president want to reduce or sell some of these aircraft, you will find out that some of these other people who are benefiting from it will prevail on him or put pressure on him not to dispose of some of these um, uh, aircraft. But the truth of the matter is that uh, you find out there are so many presidents, there are so many prime ministers all over the world who don't keep any presidential fleet or prime ministership uh, fleet. In fact, I think uh, the British uh, prime minister, when he wants to travel, I think most times he either uses the military plane or he travels in the British airways. So why can't we adopt the same formula? It's a wasteful expenditure to keep that humongous uh, amount of aircraft and then the humongous amount of money that is being used to maintain them. And you know what? Whether you fly an aircraft or you leave it on the tarmac, you are incurring very, very heavy cost on them. These are some of the things that are bleeding the country. And when the economy and when your revenue is dwindling, one will respect that something be done with regard to some of this very, very wasteful expenditure. If countries that are producing aircraft, their president, their prime ministers, and the royalties are not keeping a private plane paid for by the taxpayers' money, I don't know why a poor country like Nigeria should be keeping such amount of, uh, a such number of um, a presidential fleets with the attendant costs that goes with it. Right, uh, what are your thoughts on this Obajana um, uh, cement ep episode between the Kogi state government and uh, Dangote? Um, it seems like, uh, according to the Nation newspaper, uh, Dangote is saying that uh, they, as a company that is uh, uh, pr uh, properly acquired Obajana cement, which is uh, in contention between it and the Kogi state government, we had some sort of meeting uh, in Abuja yesterday, I believe, uh, amid protests. Mm. Honestly speaking, when I first read the story that a certain persons have invaded the Obajana plant, shot their workers, and shot the place, the place down, I was shocked to my bone marrow. This is a company that has been operating for so many years without any issue. So you ask yourself, why now? Why now? But again, we must also ask, was due diligence followed in the acquisition of Ajana plan? If it was not followed, it is never too late. If an infraction was committed 30, 50 years ago, and it is discovered today, the law allows you to still correct that infraction and bring those who may be responsible for the infraction to justice. I am aware. And in fact, a friend uh, called me when I started raising the issue on the Obajana issue. 
And he said, there are some other plants in Ogun State that have similar fate with the upper Jana plant, which again is in the hands of um, uh, Mr. Dan Gotham. The truth of the matter is that when you look at most of the acquisitions that have been done by wildlife, especially during the privatization era of General Lucia Gobar Sanjong, those acquisitions cannot meet the full scrutiny of the law. There were so many underhand activities that led to the acquisition of some of those uh, uh, companies. Some of them were sold as scraps, when in actual fact and in reality, they were a very good going and viable concerns. My only uh, problem with the way the Kogi state government has uh, gone about it is they should have followed the due process of law. They could take Gangote and go to court to recover the, 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 the plant instead of engaging in self-help and shooting innocent people who went to live, who want, who want to, who went there to just get their daily meal, to get a job, and are not concerned or are not part and parcel of the political undertone or the political shenanigans that led to the accusation of right, that uh, Wale, plan. Uh, we have yeah. to go, but just before we leave, the All president right. is assuring Nigerians that he would leave a secure you know, country. Uh, we just have a few more months before the end of... Well, I, I hope so. Most times when people in government say this, it is just a political statement to give the people a kind of hope. Because if you don't give your people a kind of hope, they fall into despondency, and then uh, other things can follow. Uh, if Mr. President has uh, not been able to restore peace and security to Nigeria for about seven and a half years now, I have serious doubts that the remaining months left will be sufficient to do it, even though he must give it to government that the spate of uh, attack from Boko Haram and the kidnapping of people and banditry generally has in the last few months subsided. Why it has subsided, we are yet to get to know the reason. Could it be that people are paying ransoms now as people are insinuating that even the last batch of people that were, who were uh, adopted on the train that the federal government uh, uh, and some other people paid ransom before they are released. A nation that wants security shouldn't be rewarding criminality. It shouldn't be paying ransom. I, but I think... now, the army should have a template. The police should have a template. The customs and all the other security people should have a template for the rescuing of people that are adopted by bandits. All right, Tunde Kola, Wale, we have to leave, uh, leave it at this particular point now. Uh, thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much. Yes, we appreciate thank you. Uh, you know, your perspective. I appreciate you too. Have a lovely day. All right, then Tunde Kola, Wale is a legal practitioner, and uh, we have been looking through the pages of the National Dailies this morning. We call it a wrap. We'll definitely return tomorrow. Uh, but just before we move away, we need to tell you what happened today in history. Please stay with us.